doing a pour on another project, which is, um, what am I calling it? Uh, build a micro rail to build beds, uh, garden beds and small shelters. Well, something like that. But anyways, I'm doing a pour on that. I did one yes, the first one yesterday, and I'm, I regretted not having this available because I had some extra, and I'm just gonna go ahead because I really wanna do another small pour on this one to fill some of those cavities. So this is where I had an issue on that one where there was obviously a little bit of leaking going on. I had some tape on it, but the tape basically wasn't tight enough. And so it just kind of folded under and I lost a huge amount of stuff. So I'm gonna retape that edge. I think I've had solved for all the other stuff going on down here where it was soaking through uh, because I think it's filled now. And, and that's the goal is to basically fill those deep cavities and then I'll do one final pour on there at a different time. But I just want to have that handy. You're going to see that show up. So in this project, uh, again, last night I poured the first pour, which was the idea was to get down into these crevices, the spaces between each board, which I could have prevented or minimized if I had just put a clamp going the other direction when I did the glue up and that would have tightened them up and prevented most of that from going through. But Again, I covered uh, how I handled that. I put some tape on the on the back of that to solve for that. Uh, some of it leaked through, but not bad. And then I think they're pretty well sealed up other than one tiny little one right here. But so now what I wanna do is again, get my second coat on here. And I do have one spot over here, which is actually a pretty thick pour because I wanna do some demo in there of a, of a, a joinery method. And so it's pretty thick. And so I want to do one more thin pour, just to get everything, make sure it's covered, all the leaks are gone. And then that'll sit. And then I'll do one final pour at some point later. So that's where I'm at now. I've got to get all the stuff ready, get it out and, and, and uh, take care of things. Okay, so I'm going to use the same amount of stuff as I did yesterday, two of the green solo cups. But yesterday, if, if you notice, I had an issue with pouring them into a little larger uh, cup, a solo cup, but it was too small and I even ended up tipping it. It was hard to mix. I ended up using two cups, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go to a larger container. Again, every time you use these, they're, they're done. You can't redo them. So... I'll be pouring it in there. Uh, once I start the pour, I'll look at the clock and I'll make sure that I have, uh, do the proper timing, proper mixing period. Uh, the other thing is I've got a little larger brush today, which is gonna help. And um, the gloves, of course, well, leave a little bit to be desired, but it is what it is. So much better than yesterday. You saw the issues I was having by trying to save on a plastic container. Well, these, you know, you can buy them in bulk. They're the liners for the painters. You buy them in the paint department, like at Home Depot, whatever. And they're not very expensive. You buy like 10 or 12 in a pack, but they really work well. They're, they actually come in kind of handy for pouring. They're almost too big because then when you go to pour them, you lose some along the sides and stuff, but, but not bad. Um, anyhow, it's just going to make it much, much easier and not going to spill as much. So I, I have to, I'm doing my, my timing here as well. All right, so I've got my five minutes out of it. Um, and... It's looking pretty good, right? I've been scraping the sides, scraping the bottom, all changing, you know, getting it off the stick. I don't do the two cup thing like they kind of show you. Um, 
I don't know, this seems to have worked. So now I'm gonna start the pour, and what I'm gonna do because of this large container, is I'm gonna pick one corner and try to stay in that corner, and then again, that'll help reduce the waste of the pour of the stuff that's gonna be along the side. The only thing is I do need to get this up a little higher. I need to put it up on some sticks. All right, I'm starting to, as I do further and further in, I start to trip, check for level, especially on these big ones, because remember, this is self-leveling stuff. So I'm doing pretty well right here. It's not bad, if you can see that. And um, same thing, this one here was a little off, and so I put a piece of paper, uh, folded something underneath it, and that lifted it up, because otherwise this stuff's gonna start flowing more towards one direction, and again, you either get too much in one spot and too little in the other. But, so we're pretty well level, close enough for this one, and then I'll be checking it later on the next round to make sure it's even more leveler yet, if that's a term, right? So now, I'm back to this guy, which, again, the thick areas are this cavity down here, you can see I still have a good maybe a quarter to three eighths inch up there and they tell you not to pour more than a certain depth. Again, I don't always follow the rules and because it's a prototype, I can even be worse on that. I, I have a lot of, that all got taken care of down there. That was a pretty deep cavity. Uh, I've got a lot of roughness going on right here. And then again, I'm just gonna double check. I'm gonna make sure I get some in here where I think there was a cavity that it was oozing through but i believe it's been corrected so i'll start that pour again using the same corner of this that i can and i want to focus on the areas the thick parts here i'm not going to put much on these surfaces here anymore because that's a high surface surface intentionally and the other end is high as well i have high point here and a high point over here because that way then all of the stuff is can flow into the center part and then it doesn't have to be thick along the edge where you really don't need it anyhow it doesn't need to be that 3d thing going on so i'm going to go ahead and pour this So as I'm looking at this, this a actually may become my final pour. Um, again, I've what I've done a lot of countertops, and I'll use uh, natural slate on them, which has you know a 3D texture to it. And what I've been able to do is, and I'll try to show you some examples of that, is pour it so that you've got all the sharp edges are all taken away and everything, but you leave just this little tiny bit of stuff that people can actually touch and feel the bumps. Now, so which means that I want to. If I do want to do this as a final, then I do want to get a little up on here yet. It'll be a very thin coat, just enough that it'll self-level uh, uh, self itself, right? I want to make sure I get all the seams. But then when I get into here, I want to make sure that I have these little rough little spots right here to a point where, again, you can touch them, you can wipe them with a dust rag, and they're not going to catch on the rag, but yet you can still feel that 3D-ness to it. So I, I'm getting kind of thrilled about this well let's just see what happens and I still have uh, enough material in there I think to do it since I think it might be my final pour in fact I'm gonna just kind of almost commit to that right now unless something goes wrong but I didn't again I made sure that I have at least a little bit everywhere and I still need to do the pushing of it with the brush, which I'm gonna do next. But I'm also leaving some in the container from this batch, because if then if I do get to a point where, ooh, I need a little bit more, then I've got it, right? I don't have to make up another batch and in a hurry. And the other thing is, is that this is meant to be a vertical surface, not a horizontal surface. So, so it's been about mm, maybe 15 minutes since I've done the pours. Now I pulled out the Milwaukee heat gun Hair dryers, I believe, do it. The nice thing about the heat gun is that they don't actually send out a lot of flow, air flow, like a air, like a hair dryer does. 
but they do send out a lot of heat and this one even has two stages on it so it's perfect for this because it doesn't blow the stuff away it instead just heats it which it gets the job done so i'll all right so let's move on over to this one this is the larger one right the uh micro panel and so i this i have not done any on this at all yet with the heat gun and you can see for instance like right there there's a bubble so we're just going to hit that guy right away gone just like that a couple more over here gone one right there gone not a lot of other ones now if i get over here as i get over to this side and you look down into there you can see a whole bunch of tiny ones where there was a little bit where she went down so i'm just going to hit that for a second gone that's all it took same thing over here i've got some of that going on gone again only focusing on the bubbles themselves then once i know that i've got the main stuff then i'm going to do a quick overview on everything because uh, there are some that I'm just not going to see, which is fine, right? And if I had taken, if I had taken this piece, in, in fact, I did this some last night, where actually towards the evening or early in the morning before it gets direct lighting, is if you can put some indirect lighting off to the side, it's easier to see the bubbles. Yeah. So right now I'm just kind of going off of you know my looking around. Never focusing on any particular spot for very long at all. And not overdoing it. Now I'll come back 10 minutes from now and do that again. Look for any severe stuff. And that's it. Okay, so it's... I forgot what time it was when I first started this thing. I'll have to go back and look at that. But it's probably been about 20 minutes or half an hour. And um, I'm looking and this, the lighting is obviously quite a bit different. The sun is coming up and coming through the skylight, but I'm not seeing a lot of bubbles. In fact, I'm not even seeing them on that guy where there were a lot of them, right? So they're working there, but I know they're there. And so it's still, as long as I'm not overdoing this, it's to me, it still doesn't hurt um, to just do a real quick pass like I'm gonna do here with the fan on low. So really what I'm doing is, I'm, especially since this is the final coat on this one, I don't want any bubbles. So I go with the suspicious areas, which would be the seams. So you've got the joint there. That's where there would be bubbles typically. There would be bubbles along this. There would be bubbles in here where the wood is is much, much rougher that would be common and then of course there would be more likely a bubble wherever the joints are on those so i don't see any there but i'm going to hit them anyhow and then i'm going to go over and do the other one as well again being very careful not to push and not even going sideways i don't want to i don't want to make a wave and and distort this because it's starting to set up just a little bit and all of a sudden you get to a point where it doesn't want to flow anymore. So I'm just doing it from the top. So I'm doing this one from the top. And that's really it. It's probably going to be it. I'll come back one more time about 10 minutes from now. Just make sure we didn't have a latecomer. And it'll probably be the end of it.